Hello everyone, so nice to have you here today. My name is Parker. Today I will be showing you how you can build your own uninterruptible power supply, which is capable of powering a Raspberry Pi 4B, and I designed it for use with this computer in mind specifically. Please note, however, that it is also capable of powering any other USB device which draws up to 3 amps of power, so you can easily use this device as a battery bank and charge your cell phone with it. Going over the specifications you see on the left, at 3.5 watts draw, I had a real-world runtime of just over 24 hours, and this was running a busy Minecraft server on a Pi, so it did quite well, in my opinion. Our battery capacity is 8.5 amp hours rated, and a minimum discharge of 10.7 volts, which is pretty common for most lead-acid batteries. The beauty of the charge controller you may see pictured on the front here is that it automatically shuts off any connected loads to prevent the battery cells from being damaged should the voltage drop below 10.7 volts. Our average cost was approximately $55. This may be more or less depending on what parts you have, and you probably have some of the parts that will be listed here and so it's quite likely this may be a bit lower for you. Our device is able to work with mains power as well as solar power and I'll be showing you some of my solar testing in uh, just a few minutes. So why don't we maximize this little screen over here. Please note that if you want some detailed written instructions check the description I am recording this video in the fall, I believe it's October of 2021, and so I will be posting an Instructables tutorial on this very same project quite soon after I get done with all my testing of it. Right now, it should take me till about January because I'm wanting to test this over the winter, so. If you're watching this any time in 2022 or beyond, feel free to check the description and go take a look at the tutorial written there. And we see our diagram. Feel free to refer back to this or pause the video now if you want to look at it closer. You'll notice that in the top left corner we have our laptop charger. This is where all of our power comes from. You can replace this with a solar panel. I recommend about 40 watts if you have one lying around for use. And over here on this end is our buck converter. This converts 12 volts down to 5 volts, though this is completely optional. You can use the built-in USB ports, which are on the charge controller themselves. If you choose to do this, it will save you about $10, 8 to $10. I prefer using the buck converter because it has an inline fuse included with the kit, and I like having that peace of mind knowing that there's a little extra protection between my Raspberry Pi and the power source. Moving along, I'll show you the parts we need for this. I will post all the parts listed here, and possibly more if I forgot any, in the description, so check down there. At the heart of our build is the solar charge controller. It takes 19 volts input. It charges the battery and keeps it at float level. And it also provides 5 volts by a USB at 2.5 amps, or 12 volts at up to 10 amps output. This is our laptop charger. Now this is the main way that you mo will most likely be powering the device. It's quite likely that you have an old laptop charger laying around. If not, go check Goodwill. They generally have a basket of them for a dollar each. Get one that has DC output of at least 18 volts, but not exceeding 24 volts, and at least 3.5 amps. I would recommend. You could probably get away with 3 amps, but it's nice to have a little wiggle room. This is our buck converter. I chose this kit because it has a female USB output, it provides up to 3 amps pass through, and like I said earlier, it has a built, sorry, it has an included inline fuse kit, 
so it's nice to have that little extra protection between the Pi and the connected power source in case the circuit should somehow short of itself or if there's a spike of current and that would fry the fuse rather than our Pi. Of course we have our battery. I flipped it around because the front was kind of scuffed up. I wanted to show you the quote-unquote pretty side. I'll have a link to this. I recommend at least 10 amp hours. That'll give you some decent runtime. Like I said, about 24 hours at just over idle. This video is poorly, sorry, this picture is poorly lit, but this kind of shows you how everything's hooked up. There are little screws in here you tighten the wires down with. So we have our input side. This is our laptop charger. And we have our two wires running up to the top of the battery. I strongly recommend that you don't accidentally cross these wires or somehow short them out or connect them in reverse because you will fry something. And doing some preliminary testing, I was able to figure out the total runtime, see how everything works. And I found that our little buck converter generally puts out almost exactly 5.06 volts. That may be slightly different for you, but I would certainly hope that it's not enough to worry about long as it does not go over a maximum of 5.25 volts you should be fine some people get away with more and then I set it up on the desk for final testing next I hooked up a solar panel this is 40 watts it seems to be doing quite well as I'm making this video I'm actually testing the solar charging on it right now and I'm watching it it's actually spiking up to 13.7 volts and then it drops down to 13.5 seems to repeat this process every few seconds or so and I think that's its way of trickle charging or float charging or something like that but it keeps the voltage right where it needs to be and it does quite well so far so I would recommend a 40 watt panel you might be able to get away with less depending on how much sunlight you have per day and the beauty of our device here is that if it gets to be winter time, and perhaps you live in Finland and they have very few daylight hours, you can easily unscrew these two little screws right here and plug a laptop charger into it, and that'll keep everything running smoothly. So that's great. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please go down in the description and check the Instructables tutorial. I will update that as needed. And as I said, it's not posted at the time of releasing this video, but it will be quite soon. And so it's very detailed, and it goes over some extra comments I might have forgotten to add. I hope you've had a great time. Feel free to ask me any questions you are concerned about in the comments, and I hope to see you all again very soon. Have a great day.